hell over the body. This eruption, that has no official name yet, continues to surprise everyone. Most of you are probably familiar with the new fissure that opened two days ago on April 5th, that is now the largest producer of lava in the system. Some of you may know this, but yet another fissure opened at midnight. It was caught by Ruse livestream camera. Check it out. This is very close to the area I was sitting in one week ago. This now makes the total number of fissures three, and we can sort of see a pattern where they are moving to the northeast. Here you can see the pinpoint locations of the fissures and the day they opened, along with the area the lava covers, marked with orange. The new fissures are very close to the rescue team's camp. Fortunately, they are all intact as of now and are not in any immediate danger. A new hiking trail was paved and the area was opened up again today, but due to very poor weather conditions, few people went to see the newly formed fissures, so there were mostly scientists and news reporters at the site today. As of now, there are three fissures in the system, and with them all combined, the lava flow has increased. No official number yet, but it's at least over 5 cubic meters per second. Here's the full time lapse of the newest fissure forming in the middle of the existing ones, with the old one being to the left and the newer one to the right. With this awesome aerial view, you can see that the lava is now connected as one instead of two separate areas. By looking at this image of how Geldinger that it looked before the eruption, you can see just how much lava is there already, with the average depth being at around 30 to 35 meters and reaching all the way up to 50 meters. The lava fall produced by the largest fissure is now covering up the valley floor of Meradalir, and it's crazy to see how thin the lava is which is due to how hot it is. Is this hot because of the depth it's coming from, and being fed straight from a mantle, making it very pure. All these fissures are being fed by the same magma dike, or plume, and it's this dike that we were always talking about and watching before the eruption began. It is believed that more fissures will open further northeast in the dike, towards Kalir, and most experts and scientists agree on that. Those new fissures might open tonight or tomorrow. Next week, we don't know. But I definitely recommend being tuned in to the live streams provided by Roof and MPL on YouTube, as you might just be able to see a new fissure opening, and that is a great experience. I'm not encouraging people to sit in front of their screens 24 7, but you might just want to check in now and then, to see if something has happened. But what can we expect in the next coming days? Well, it is more likely for more fissures to open at this point than not, so we'll definitely see another one open soon. And today, an earthquake hit, which only measured around 2.8 in magnitude, 5.7 kilometers northeast of Grindavik at a depth of around 6 kilometers. It may not seem large, but it's very similar occurrence to what happened before the second fissure opened. But the cause of this earthquake is due to release in pressure, and we can see that clearly as this earthquake sits right in the well-known pressure buildup zone marked in grey. And by taking a look in the area the magma dike sits, we can see an increase in earthquake activity on the northeast end compared to the dead silence on the Nautai Valley on the south end, which was believed to be the place to host the eruption originally. This earthquake activity contributes to a fissure opening in that area, so be ready on these live streams if you want to have a chance at seeing one open live. But where is the lava going? It's not going any distances yet, at least for the next year. For now, it will continue to fill up Meradalir 
and Kaltikatalir, and most likely end up in Nautai, and from there it could reach Sudhirstranatabur. Experts say that it would take a whole year to do so, with the current lava flow, which probably sits steadily around 6 to 8 cubic meters per second, now with all the fissures combined. So we'll now see it continue to fill up Meradalir, which is a large valley. But who knows, maybe a fissure will after all open in Nautai, which would speed up the process of lava reaching Sudhirstranatabur tenfold. I'm really excited to continue watching this event and see more surprises this eruption has to offer as we are now entering the second chapter of it. If you want to be kept up to date on the situation and learn more about Iceland's geology in general, you could consider subscribing so you can find the videos more easily. And if you enjoyed the video, you could like it since it helps YouTube share it with others who might enjoy it too. Hope to see most of you again soon with more exciting news to cover. And thank you all very much for watching.